Do you host Zoom meetings or workshops? And maybe you've used the polling feature that Zoom offers, but did you know that they have not only advanced polling now, but also quizzes? Personally, I love a good quiz because you can start to take advantage of getting some feedback, but also assessing what are people gaining, their knowledge, et cetera. We're gonna get into that. I'm gonna show you how to set up the poll. How do you add it? How do you launch it? What does that look like? And of course, what are some of the things you need to consider if you are thinking about using either the advanced polls or the quizzes option in Zoom? And if you're new here, if you never met me, my name is Kat. I help people make create more professional and engaging online presentations. And one of the things I love to do when I am working with a group is use something like the polling feature. This is a great way to engage the entire group early on, hopefully, but also throughout. And with quizzes, they have sort of an extra layer in my opinion. So why do we want to use a quiz? Well, if you've just taught your group something, using a quiz means that they actually will apply their knowledge and reflect on what they just learned and put it in a cir certain circumstance. You can also make sure people are understanding what you are teaching them, what you're trying to convey. I think that's really important for understanding. And before you move on, are people getting the key concepts? Also, if you tell someone, hey, there's going to be a quiz, so pay attention. In all likelihood, you are going to get a little bit more attention than someone who just kind of sits passively taking it in, but thinks, I don't really need to know this. Now, not everyone will be that way, but I think many people typically perk up when they know you're going to be quizzed on this. And if you are the host and you are teaching, this is an excellent way for you to gather feedback from your group. Is the way you're teaching working? Is this concept getting through? Are there ways you can change and adjust what you're actually teaching and how you are presenting this information? Because you might be noticing people aren't actually getting the answers right. Also, you can get feedback on your actual questions. Are you phrasing these questions in a way? I know early on when I used the poll, the first time I used the poll, I realized I asked a question. Uh, I think I asked people how they felt their comfort level. Then I asked, what do people, I had to fill in a blank. How do you want to feel at the start and at the end of this session? So this wasn't a quiz, this was a poll. And I noticed that people were actually using the rating scale at the top instead of actually entering words. So that was a lesson for me. That was valuable feedback that... I had confused my audience because some people were not answering how I interpreted or when I wrote that question. So it's really helpful for you to be able to adjust those things. So let's first dive into setting up the poll. So this is similar if you've ever set up a poll before. We're going to add your quiz or advance poll. I like to add these in before in advance. You can make edits to your poll, but I like to actually go into the settings. So if we log in here, I have a demo meeting that is going on. And I have actually set up two different ones, a quiz and an advanced poll. So let's take a look. Let's actually open the advanced poll. And before I do, actually, let me just share that if you have a meeting and you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a polls and quizzes. If you don't have any created, you have the option to create. And now you'll see the option of poll or advanced polls and quizzing. So this is the traditional one that's been around for a while. And then this is the new one. So just to save time, I set up a couple. So let's take a look at a poll and see some of the options. So here's one example that is a new option with this advanced and it is fill in the blank. And you can actually add more than one. So in this example, I said speaking in public makes me feel blank. So when this poll is launched, you can see this. And you could add something like, I would rather blank. <laughs> So you can add more than one. You could have a couple of a couple of spaces. And so I can have that. Another one that we have is a rating scale, which is really nice. So here's an example of how likely are you to use a quiz in a Zoom meeting? And people can rate from not likely to extremely likely. And you can also edit these labels. Maybe you say strongly disagree, strongly agree. Another one, short answer and then also long answer. So you can gather information. The one of the things that I'll mention, and I'll come back to this again later, is that this won't, when you share results, it will not share. So you'll be able to see what people filled in. Same with the fill in the blank. You will see the answers, but when you share the results, it's just too unwieldy. And so that's not shown to everyone. Whereas 
something like this, the poll results of a rating scale or multiple choice or single choice, that will be shown to your participants, but not when someone fills in the blank. Now let's take a look at the quiz. So I'm gonna save that. So the quiz, I haven't actually finished setting it up. I want to build a quiz question with you and then also show you how you set the answers. And you will actually see that it says set answer. And that's because down here at the bottom, which I, I realize is cut off a little, let me just adjust this window. And that should help things. Here we go. So if you go to the bottom of this window, you'll see three dots, which allows you to mark something as a quiz. There are certain options for the quiz and some that aren't options for the quiz. So you'll see an example here where question number four, this is a rating scale. This doesn't have the option to set an answer because you cannot add, like you can't make a rating scale into a quiz question, but you can make a quiz question out of something like multiple choice, adding more than one option single choice where there's only one right answer. This is an example, and I, I couldn't think of a Zoom related question, but you can rate something, first place, second place, third place, you can change up these labels. And, and then there's one more that's not on here that I thought we could build together. So I'm gonna add a question. Over here, this is where you select the type of question. So these four are all able to be quizzes. You can add quiz answers for short and long answer, but you have to mark those manually. So there's no way to automatically mark if someone inputs their own answer. So let's look at matching. Matching is another option that you can use. And I let's just do a fun one. You know, match, match the show to the streaming service. Let's do that. So I'm going to put in a couple of a uh, couple of shows, <laughs> vary it up from different places. And let's do the third one, my girl, Brene. All right, so I have just added three prompts. So this is the question and what are the answers? So let's say that one of the answers is Disney. Oops, love typing in front of other people, Disney Plus. Another answer here, we can do H, HBO, and we can finally do Netflix. And so now we have some answers. So let's actually turn some of these questions into quizzes. We'll start at the top and we'll set the answers. So we're telling Zoom what is the right answer. So when we say this, we now have the option to select the correct answer. This is a multiple choice. Quizzes are, oh, that's wrong, I have to change that. Useful for increasing attention and confirming understanding. Gathering opinions is a poll benefit, not a quiz benefit. And then I say, I am done. And just because I don't wanna leave that there, we will update this, quizzes are useful for. Let's go to the next one. Zoom quiz results show fill in the blank responses. The true answer is false. That was awkward. All right. What was the podium order for the 2022 Australian Grand Prix? Yes, I've been watching Drive to Survive and I watch F1 racing now. So this was the last Grand Prix and first place was Leclerc. Oh, where's set answer? First place, second place, and third place and say done. And this is not a quiz. I cannot set an answer to a rating scale. And then finally, Drive to Survive. Oh, set answer. This one is Netflix, this one is Disney Plus, and this one is HBO. Done. And now I can save this quiz. So that is a look at the advanced polling options and how you set a quiz. Now, personally, I'm a fan of grouping these together. I wouldn't normally put a poll question in the middle of a quiz unless it was just being very clear about it. I think it's nice to just give people quiz questions or give people poll questions and not necessarily mix it up like that. I also make sure that you group subjects together. So I think it's nice to interspace your quizzes and polls throughout your workshop. 
that's a nice way to mix it up, kind of changes the pace, but you want to think about your actual overall timing. So now let's talk about launching the poll. So I've got it created, but now I'm in the meeting and I want everyone to be able to take the poll or the quiz. So let's go back over and this is my hosting. And yes, I've got the two, my uh, evil twin and I have, I'm going to answer this on the phone and I'll show you that in a moment, but I want to show you on this side, how you launch the poll. So down here at the bottom, you can see, and it might be a little bit small, but polls and quizzes. So when I click this button, for me, the host, it launches the option to first select which one do I want to have? And it is labeled that this one has quiz questions. I also called it quiz, but you can name it something based on the topic or the area that you are looking at. So it doesn't have to be called quiz, doesn't have to be called pulled. It could be, you know, getting started, um, checking in. And so if we were to look at the advanced poll and select that, we'll see the questions. And this is what it looks like on the computer. And we'll see an example on the phone as well. So this is the fill in the blank. Public speaking in public makes me feel blank. I would rather blank. So they can fill in their answers here. Nice, simple rating scale. This is the short answer and this is the long answer. And there is an option at the bottom edit poll that's gonna take you to your web browser so that you can make the edits there. Let's look at the quiz that we're gonna launch the quiz. So here you can see an example, the multiple choice. So you can choose more than one, Oop, single choice. And then we've got this rank order where it's got the one, two, three. So this could be other titles. So you've got your columns or sort of the options. And then you wanna answer the questions down the rows. And then here we have a rating scale, not a quiz, but it's not made clear necessarily here. And then finally we've got matching. So matching has a little drop down. So, and you'll see this in action beside each show, you can drop down and pick the right answer. Here before we launch, I wanna show you the three dots. So you can say display the questions in a random order, just something that you have the option. You can also show one question at a time. I think it's nice just to be able to have them all, but you could play around with this, see what you prefer and do a test. So let's launch this poll. So I say launch. Now as the host, I can see how many people have participated. This is a meeting of one, so it's very small. But let's look at the next scene. I've got my side by side here. So as a participant, so this is my phone on the right. I am seeing this quiz. It has popped up on my phone. And so you can kind of see me scrolling here. This is multiple choice. So I'm going to check off. Now this one, I actually happen to know. And let's do true. And let's, I want to get this one right. I am now dropping down. So on a mobile device, it has the different drop down options here. Oh, no, that's not right. <laughs> Gotta give Leclerc his props, okay. And then here, this is just a rating scale. You can see, do you pay more attention? If you know there's a quiz, I'm gonna pick four. Oh, that's interesting. I'm having trouble selecting that. Maybe this is <laughs> a live example of what doesn't work. It's not letting me pick. So I would not mix and match. And then match the show. So Drive to Survive is on Netflix. Moon Knight, maybe I think Moon Knight is on HBO and Atlas of the Heart is on Disney Plus, which is not true, but I'm just putting that. Now I'm going to submit my answer, which now on the host side, I can see that one person has participated, which in this case is 100%. And now let's take a look at ending the poll. So everyone's taken it, but I can see the different responses here, but now I'm going to share the results. But one of the things I wanna do when I share the results is I wanna show the correct answers so that you can actually see it. So when this is off, I just see my own answers on the phone. I don't see the answers, but here show correct answers now you'll actually see the responses and they're on the screen. So when we look at this and we say, okay, quizzes are useful for, I can see I got this right. You can see that I got this one wrong. You can see I got the Grand Prix order right. And there's no rating scale, that was a mistake. But here I got this wrong and it does tell me the correct answers. 
so that I'm able to actually know what it is that I got wrong. And uh, so this is what the quiz results actually look like. And on the phone, I can just say close. And then I'm done looking at those responses. Then on the host side, I can say stop sharing. That will close for everyone. So that is what it looks like. It's fairly straightforward to set up. But I do think you want to make sure you pay attention to sharing the answers. I know sometimes you think you've shared the answers and you're going over them as if everyone can see, but they actually can't see what they got right or wrong. There might be cases where you don't actually want to tell the right answer and that's okay, but make sure that you are planning that in advance. Now, one of the other things I want to go over are just some considerations for using this technology. So the first one is sharing results. I think it's really helpful for you to make sure that you are choosing in advance. Am I sharing the answers or not? The other thing with sharing results is it's important to know that fill in the blank, it's not gonna show up for people. Same with any short answer or long answer. So you want to make sure that you are, if you have those answers, you as the host, you'll see them. So you can choose to either read those off or maybe you have someone helping you out putting together a page or you can say, I'm gonna share that with the group later. Just let people know that they're not going to see those answers. Or you might choose not to use short answer, long answer, or fill in the blank if you want everyone to be able to see the correct, well, that would be a poll. Um, so that if you want people to see those results, I've, I've actually read them off and said, okay, here's some of the answers that people submitted, and I was able to do that. The next thing is grouping questions. So I really think you should separate out your quiz, as we just saw there with that demo. Tip, I think that's just better for understanding. There's more clarity when you either just have a quiz or you just have a poll, and you can be clear on that. The next thing is consider timing. Because there is an element of launching the poll, giving people time to answer, Sometimes people can trickle in. So how much time are you going to give people? Then there's the time required in order to share the results or review the results. So when it comes to mapping out the outline of your workshop or your meeting, I think you want to give yourself a buffer when it comes to doing these things. The next one is actually a sign-in quirk that I discovered while I was doing a demo, testing this out for this live stream. If you sign in, as the host, and then you sign in from another device in that same account, it will disable your ability to launch a poll. So if you are someone who wants to have a secondary device calling in, whether that's because you're monitoring it, whether that's maybe using a Zoom room because you want different quality, whatever it is, log in with a different account. <laughs> so even if you have to just make a free Zoom account, don't sign in twice, it will disable your ability to actually run the quiz or poll and you do not want that to happen, obviously. And so that's something that I think you also want to consider. I guess one last thing that's not on here is to encourage people to use the, the actual app. So you saw it on the phone, it works on the app on the computer. Where I've run into problems with groups is if somebody is joining from the Zoom browser, they they have challenges. I'm not actually sure it's worked with one. I don't know if that has changed since that happened, but if someone is joining the Zoom call from the browser, they don't have all of the advantages and tools that others would have. So I think that's another thing to consider. If you are running polls or quizzes, tell people in advance that they should be joining this meeting from a Zoom app instead of the browser or to avoid the browser. Or you might wanna give them an alternative way to submit their answers if that might be the case. So that is the advanced polls and the quiz options. We showed you how to set it up, how to launch it, run it, what it looks like for a participant on a mobile device, very similar on the computer. So I guess the question would be, is this something you are going to use, implement, take advantage of the benefits of engaging the whole group getting some of that valuable feedback, understanding where your audience is, and ultimately helping you to create a more professional and engaging online presentation.